What is up, great and glorious human beings? Al Copeland from Rising Tide here. Today we are talking about the standard care and maintenance of a meat computer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the last three or four videos. We talk a little bit about how humans are just meat computers. And while I know that's kind of a gross phrasing, I hope that it helps you think a little bit more about how humans are just bits of technology, little puzzles that we get to solve on a daily basis. Uh, it's a joy, even if it is terrifying and frustrating at times. So back at it, the standard care of meat computers. One of the big things that we do in our industry is we plan for redundancy. We plan for backups and maintenance and products and circuits running in parallel. And we, we worry about what happens when there's a breach or a system is down and how that's going to impact our clients and our bottom line. So uh, if we are looking at humans, if we're looking at the people in our circles as important pieces of technology, how are we doing the same thing? How are we expressing the same care and intention in our, in our plans and our redundancy plans and our backup plans for our people? And that includes ourselves. So <clears throat> to, uh, to further work this question through in a more practical way, I'm going to bring back our friend, the folder gluer packer. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, when, when I did this talk in person, I was able to kind of talk with the audience and they were all very great. Uh, and, you know, I asked this question. I was like, without knowing anything about this guy, other than the fact that he takes pieces of cardboard, folds it, unfolds it, glues it, folds it, and then packs it in a box. How would you take care of it? How would you learn about it? And people said, you know, like I'd take it apart. I would, you know, go to conferences. Uh, you would um, find resources online. You would, you would get an expert. You might hire somebody. And a lot of these things are common themes for humans. And looking at that, I, I actually went and found some documentation on a maintenance plan for a folder glue packer. So a little bit about these machines. I told you um, in my earlier videos that I worked at a location that had uh, like 30 of these devices on the floor. And each of these machines had a single human dedicated to running that machine. And these machines, they run 24-7. Um, they run at such a high capacity. They do uh, thousands and thousands and thousands, um, tens of thousands of boxes an hour or a day. Um, you know, just a, a huge, crazy number to keep up with the demand. So this sheet here is, is an example of the checklist that is gone through weekly, monthly, and quarterly to make sure that this machine that is worth $250,000 on average can run at its best potential when it needs to be running, can run at its, its most unhindered. And so you have these men and women who are good mechanics. They have their own toolboxes. They sit and they watch over these machines through their whole shift. And they make sure that it is, it is running at its best speed. The way that they go through in each of those little parts and arms, they know the exact degree and angle. They watch the cardboard go through and they say, oh, wait, that one is kind of not sticking up quite right. And it's actually hindering the way that the box moves. So I'm actually going to run that down. They compare times between, uh, between them when the people have the same machine, they'll be like, Oh, well, you know, like I was able to run this number. And then they, they compare those things with, with like joy, frankly, they're able to, to take these machines apart. They know them backwards and forwards and they put them back together again, constantly. Um, so, so yeah, you've got daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual maintenance where these machines are taken offline. They're, they, they're not allowed to work. You want to make sure that they are completely off and that you are replacing uh, bands and gaskets and that you are refilling the grease. You're making sure that it's lubricated properly. You're, you're going through, and this is a constant thing. And so... So that's one of the things that you do for the gluer folder packer. The other thing is as you're tinkering, 
there are basic safety precautions that are expected. There's a baseline and that is lockout tagout, right? So for those not familiar with lockout tagout, when you're working with machinery, there are mechanisms where you have your own lock and key. And whenever you're working on a machine, you put your lock in to make sure that the machine doesn't power on while you're working. And, you know, a machine like this, it's moving so off, you know, fast, you can lose a finger or an arm pretty easily. Injuries are pretty common. But the thing about basic safety precautions is these things aren't just taught once and then you're expected to just know it. I mean, you, you are expected to know it. But my point is, is, as you see in the parentheses there, common sense is not common. It's not a sense as in the five senses. It's not something that you're born with, nor is it common as everyone knows it or understands it. These basic safety precautions are part of the culture. There's, there's signs up. They're constantly making sure that people are, you know, working through these proper channels to make sure that they stay safe and that their people stay safe. It's really important that you are communicating your expectations, not just about like the product, but also the care of the product, like the care of the people that are taking care of the product. So um, I think that's that's just really some, some there's some very, uh, we'll, we'll go through these analogies a little bit more, but just, just so you know, this is the care that goes into these machines on a regular basis. And it's, <laughs> frankly, it's fascinating to me. Like I said, it's, it's given me just, just a, I think it's just beautiful. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to stop talking about this specifically for now. But what would that look like? What would this look like if instead of a lure folder packer, it was people? What would it look like if you had your dedicated human that was standardly there watching your investment and making sure, doing little tinkery things to make sure, oh, well, that doesn't look like it's running that angle just quite right. Let's, you know, let's talk about what you need. Oh, you didn't sleep well. Oh, well, you know, what does that look like? What do you need? What sort of daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual maintenance do you have for the people in your care? When are they supposed to go completely offline? When do they get their, uh, their, their belts and their gaskets replaced? How is that built in? Honestly, it's not common sense. You assume that people understand things. You assume that it's common. It's really not that common. You have to understand that people just don't know how to take care of themselves or others. And it's not something to get frustrated about. It's just something to understand and to consider as you're taking care of the people on your crew. So what does that look like practically? You know, you're not going to have a little, a sheet, a checklist monthly, weekly or anything that's, I mean, maybe you do, maybe you do, but uh, frankly, that's a little bit overkill, isn't it? Like we should just know we're just humans, but it's not common sense. So maybe there's a few things that you can do. One of those things that you may want to consider is to read the manual. Literally, we've done this at Rising Tide. I think I did this at Gwizinta. Um, You can literally write a manual about how you like to be engaged, the type of things that you need. If you're remote working and you have flex schedules, what hours you like to work, what's the best way to communicate correction? Is it something where you like to have it in writing or you want to talk about it? You know, all of these things matters to you. What you like may not matter to someone else. Talking about those operating systems and how things get lost in translation sometimes, or those shortcuts that don't work um, for other people that work for you. So maybe you want to read the manual. Maybe that's one way to learn how to take care of someone. And maybe there's other resources that you want to read. Maybe there's books on psychology or books on taking care of other people. Like there are outside materials that will help you understand how to maintain and care for the people in your circle. So not just, and not just the people in your circle, but yourself, like what sort of, what sort of care do you need as well? Something else that you do when there's a problem, what do we say to our technicians all the time? Replicate the problem. Don't just, don't, you know, trust, but verify. Like you hear them, you see that there might be a problem. Let's replicate it and see where it's actually coming from. So whenever there's something going on, ask more questions. I think there's a, a, a thing right now where um, I saw someone say like, 
when someone comes to you with a problem, ask them if they're just wanting to vent or that they want a solution. So often, I'm very quick to jump to, I'm going to give someone a solution, but maybe they just want to vent. So ask good questions. It's not just about the problem is expected, but it is what is the problem at the heart of it? What is what is what is what do we need to be working through for this person? What do they actually need versus what what do I think they need? Oh, ask some questions. Speak the same language. Yeah, make sure that you're using the same words. We get this a lot when people are like, oh, well, my computer's not turning on. Well, is it that the monitor is off? Is it that the laptop screen is broken? Is it, is it that it can't connect to the internet, that it is on, but it's not? And so you have to make sure, you have to ask clarifying questions. You have to make sure that you're speaking the same language and sometimes even pull back and just, just ask better questions. The last one that I have here, take scheduled downtime seriously. One of the things as a manager of people and, and as an employee that I found that I'm not good at is taking scheduled downtime seriously. Burnout is real and it is your responsibility to exemplify appropriate downtime because you need it and your people need it. And if they don't see you taking it, they're going to feel guilty about taking it themselves. And as we've seen here, it's really important to be intentional about taking downtime because even machines and robots get downtime and they're nowhere near as valuable as you or anyone in your circle. And so make sure that they have some sort of time off, sure that they have some sort of time that they are not forced to be at a computer. Make sure that they are taking sick leave and that they're like, you can't control what they do in their own time. You can't control their bedtime or anything, but be aware of the markers that show that maybe they're not folding the boxes the way that they need to. Maybe there's something else in the way. Know them well enough. Ask the right questions. Read enough so that you know or you're at least aware of what's going on in their lives. So long talk there talking about the care and maintenance of folder glue packers, but also what that looks like for humans and the care of them uh, when, when they're in our circle. And this can be stuff like making sure you are feeding yourself appropriately, that you're exercising, maybe that you are, maybe you want to do yoga or some sort of meditation or prayer, these types of things. We'll talk about this more in the next section, but the standard care is not just, it's not common sense. A lot of this is things that we have to learn and relearn, <laughs> things we have to learn and unlearn and relearn. And we will talk about that more in our next session, this staying on the cutting edge of neat computer technology. I just want you to consider that as we move on, that we invest huge amounts in each industry that we're in, in the maintenance, in the redundancy, in the backups for caring for our technology. And so how are we doing that for our own lives and for the people in our lives. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been what part four and we will have part five and probably our last part coming up next. So I hope that this has been useful for you and we'll see you again soon.